A beautiful actor is elected president of the United States and visits my bed and breakfast wearing a pair of nose glasses. I serve her my maternal grandmother's favorite lunch, a banana and two scoops of cottage cheese with Kellogg's Special K sprinkles. A robot staying in the room next door to the president looks at his serving of this feast, waves his arms wildly, and announces that it doesn't compute. I pen the word decay on my forehead and serve the robot a bushel of the microchips I am hoarding. I tell my guests about my exilement and that I was framed by the president and it only looks like a banana she is eating. My pet foal enters the dining area followed by a string quartet. A gentlewoman sails through an open window playing a handheld harp and singing strange fruit. A parade of hearses brings me to my knees because I can't handle the weight of my responsibility. An interpreter relays my feelings to the president and she digs her hands in the soil under the poplar trees outside. The jangle made by the voices of the truths hiding in this earth deflect an assassin's bullet and reshape history. The kangaroo king borrows books from my library and writes in the words that will expose our misdeeds. We use lithography to reproduce these pages so the public can purchase them at mom and pop bookstores. The money we earn from page sales is used to purchase oil paints for the Madonna portrait class I host every summer that draws both professional and novice artists. Figures wearing familiar white overgarments walk toward my house, and I tell my guests to ready themselves for war. The president, robot, and gentlewoman are also seasoned slingers and fight off the terroristic posse. The kangaroo king busies himself writing a quintet for five milk carton guitars, and I play the words of my protest poetry in Morse code on the rim of a kettle. I turn my poem into a folk song and perform live wearing the president's nose glasses and sitting on a pile of home economics textbooks. I cause unrest throughout the mainstream music world because I pair my jolting unheard of lyrics with pieces of music often associated with radio jingles. I am not afraid to use my voice and say words loud, and this embarrasses my mother. A swarm of xylocopa pass over my bed and breakfast and devour the wooden cross the pelted white supremacists dropped on my lawn. I measure the hatred with a yardstick and ask Zeus to wash this evil away with rain.